from fungus, only we didn't figure that out until later on, after my mom had tried all the popular remedies. But like so many other people suffering from this hideous, embarrassing fungus, nothing killed the infection or kept it from coming back. Over-the-counter medications like Lotrimin, which actually have an incredibly high failure rate in over 7 million Americans, were of no use at all at that point. So mom went from spending $9.99 on bottles of sprays and creams to forking over $418 on a single prescription of Jublia, which only ended up causing more blistering, burning, itching, pain, and stinging all over her feet, and caused an ugly ingrown toenail. Well, before long, mom couldn't bear the agonizing burning pain, which brings us back to that fateful Saturday when she finally showed me her horrible infected feet and I demanded that she go to the ER. After a battery of tests, x-rays, blood work, even MRIs, she was diagnosed with osteomyelitis, a major staph infection that gets into your bones if left untreated for too long. Her doctor said if he couldn't stop it from eating away at her bones, that it would spread throughout her bloodstream and require her entire left foot to be amputated. We were absolutely floored. I mean, didn't everyone have cracked, dry heels and thicker toenails the older they got? The answer to that is no, but we didn't realize it at the time. They put mom on an antibiotic IV drip, while doctors seriously considered amputating her foot right then and there. Luckily for us, after nine grueling days in the hospital, the antibiotics finally stopped the infection, but the doctor still said she had to find a new way to keep that foot fungus from coming back because creams would have zero effect at this level of severity. She couldn't take oral pills because they made her sick, and her body was now resistant to the antibiotics, which meant they wouldn't stop another major infection. So even after all of that torture, the doctor was saying she could still lose her foot. Listening to all of this made my stomach lurch in fear. What was she going to do now, and how could I prevent the worst from happening? I didn't know, but I was determined to find out. So after I got home that night, I stayed awake until the sun came up, researching the possible causes and connections, and of course the different types of treatments from hundreds of medical university studies. But the more I read, and the more I saw all the gruesome photos of foot fungus left untreated, the more frustrated I got, because most of the major antidotes for foot fungus came from chemical drug corporations. But the side effects of the drugs my mom's doctor told her to take for fungus prevention has serious side effects. And when I say serious, I mean it. Just look at the FDA's public health alert at two of the most popular antifungal pills. FDA's advisory also alerts the public that both Sporinox and Lamisil tablets have been associated with serious liver problems, including liver failure and death. I remember thinking, you've got to be kidding me. My mom had barely escaped amputation, and now she was supposed to take medication that could cause her liver to fail, or even worse, death? It was all so infuriating. So, of course, I went back down the rabbit hole, researching alternative treatments, essential oils, Epsom salt baths, and a thousand other popular remedies. But I couldn't find any solid evidence that these were powerful enough to really work on foot fungus. Plus, I knew my mom had already tried most of them, so eventually I hit a brick wall. By the time I fell into bed, exhausted, my wife Sarah was just getting up to start her day. When it occurred to me that Sarah's great aunt was married to an herbalist named Dao Wong, who used a particular type of ancient Chinese medicine to heal his patients when traditional methods failed, and Sarah had said people raved about his unusual techniques and healing methods, so I figured it wouldn't hurt to reach out and see if he knew anything that could help my mom. Well, thank God for my in-laws, because within hours I was on a plane speaking with Wong himself. He invited me to visit his clinic, saying he had access to a very special set of research and practices regarding fungus infections, treatment studies nobody even knew or talked about. Needless to say, I headed straight for the man's office. Wong was supposedly 69 years old, but he looked barely over 50 and was full of energy. Once we started talking, I learned that Wong was once a professor in an ethnobotany and alternative health center in South Korea. And while he believes conventional medicine has a purpose, he said that alternative medicine, including his specialty of Chinese medicine, had always been the most successful in patients with hard-to-heal problems. He explained how he combined traditional medicine with ancient Chinese remedies to help alleviate almost any medical condition. In my mother's case, 
Wong said that nail and skin fungus is an after effect of a systematic infection, meaning the fungus growth is just a symptom, but not the root cause of the infection. So that meant over-the-counter sprays and prescriptions might confront the fungus on the surface, but never solve the real cause. He said, when waste deposit builds up in certain parts of your body, it leads to bacteria being attracted to outside parts of the body, like toes or hands. So you've got a buildup of congestion in your liver or spleen. That means your large toes can act like magnets for fungus. And since each toe relates to different parts of the body, like the pancreas or gallbladder, to eliminate a fungal infection from invading and spreading, you simply have to clear out the waste from the main organs connected to them. Wong then asked to see my mom in person before he confirmed any diagnosis. But even though I was one of his in-laws asking for advice, he had a strict policy never to give any real thoughts without seeing a patient for himself. So I arranged for my mom to come meet Wong a few days later. And once we were both sitting there, watching him inspect her sore, wounded feet, I could tell she was just as curious as I was about his methods, since she'd never heard of such an approach to healing. Then he simply asked her a question. Do you want to know why creams won't work? It's because you must first destroy fungus infections from the inside before you attack them from the outside. But anyone can achieve permanent relief from skin and nail infections of even the worst sort, regardless of which internal body part is the culprit. There was something about the way Wong spoke with such total conviction and wisdom that we couldn't help but believe every single word he said. Plus, a lot of the research I'd read did say the skin is the mirror of the internal body, which is why smokers get more wrinkles and can look older than they really are. So then he went on to explain a combination treatment process for my mom that was supposed to heal her feet in one week. I almost burst out laughing at that point, but Wong was dead serious. And you better bet, I grabbed a pen as fast as I could and started scribbling notes as he counted off three simple steps for her to follow. In order to banish her foot fungus for good. And I promise you're going to get each of those steps in full detail if you stick with me here. Because even though we didn't know what to believe, Wong's three-step method worked. At the time, my mom seemed eager to try anything new. And since Wong was an accomplished medical doctor before practicing a mixture of ancient Chinese medicine and internal remedies, we decided to try out his techniques and wait for results, which I figured would take weeks, months, or let's be honest, years. But the first morning she woke up after starting his fungus-fighting therapy, she called me to say that both her feet started feeling a bit better. They were less achy, she said, and her heels weren't screaming with pain every time she took a step. Of course, she was still in pain, but she was surprised and suddenly hopeful that even the little bit of relief she felt would last. Well, over the next couple days, I visited her regularly, and the change in her whole demeanor was amazing to watch. Not only did her toenails and heels look better to me, and I'm no doctor, but it was plainly obvious something was working here. She was actually wearing open-toed shoes for once, which is something she never did before. And by the end of the fifth day on this treatment regimen, she was sending proud snapshots of her rapidly healing feet. I mean, just take a look. It was a dramatic improvement, not only in how much healthier her feet were looking, but how pain-free she felt. By day seven, she referred so many of her teacher friends to Wong for all sorts of ailments that I told her she sounded like a commercial ad. She was happy, relieved, and even wearing her first pair of flip-flops out in public in decades. So what were the three fungus-free steps Wong gave my mom? I'll share them with you right now as promised. Keep in mind, he sent her home with additional list and information, which I can also share with you at the end of this short video. But this is the main method behind his brilliance. Step 1. Eliminate internal fungal activity by using natural antifungals. This works without any side effects, unlike Lamisil, which I already warned you of earlier. What is an antifungal? Well, just one example of many powerful antifungals Wong listed is activated charcoal. Now I know, it sounds like a weird item at a 4th of July barbecue that you'd never think of purposely ingesting, but it's actually the opposite. Activated charcoal acts like a powerful sponge that sucks up the toxic waste circulating in your gut and allows your body to secrete them in your stool. But even better, 
It continually wipes your gut clean of fungal